They're friendly, social, and noisy. The Arctic's pure white beluga whales are so vocal, they've been nicknamed the canaries of the sea. No one knows how many of the unusual animals still exist because they're so difficult to study. But researchers believe that the population that lives around the St. Lawrence River is in grave danger. The population is now in decline and has perhaps been that way for perhaps a decade now. But the reasons for that decline are a mystery to us. Scientists from Canada, Europe and the US are investigating why these belugas seem to be vanishing. Is the problem in the St. Lawrence River a unique case? Or is it a red flag for the future of the belugas across the Arctic? Belugas are highly social marine mammals that might live as long as 80 years. They form strong bonds with each other, especially mothers and calves. Their bulbous forehead, called a melon, is so flexible, it even allows them to make facial expressions. Belugas travel and hunt in pods of up to 100, all of them constantly producing chirps, clicks, whistles, and squeals. We're dealing with, with animals that have a profoundly acoustic experience of the world. So belugas are, are um, as acoustic as we are visual. Sound is everything to them. There are 29 recorded beluga populations spread throughout the Arctic, in the waters of Norway, Russia, Alaska, Canada, and Greenland. The St. Lawrence River population is isolated from the others. And at the start of the 20th century, there were about 10,000 in this river. Today, there are fewer than 900. If this population were in good health, it would have doubled since we started studying it in the early 1980s. But that's not happening. An international team of scientists is determined to solve the mystery and hopefully reverse the trend. First, they need to determine how many pregnant females are in St. Lawrence waters. The scientists take small biopsies from the beluga subcutaneous fat. There are lots of indications to suggest a problem with reproduction. Is it because the females aren't falling pregnant? Is it because once they are pregnant, they abort and the young don't survive? There are many questions to answer, but we need to tackle them systematically. So we decided to address this issue by starting at the beginning. Are the females conceiving? And that's what we're checking now. 2016 was a catastrophic year. 16 corpses were found, those of six newborns, three juveniles, and seven adult females. Sometimes, researchers arrive in time to save a beluga that's washed ashore. At the same time as we documented a decline in the beluga population, we saw a very marked increase in the mortality of newborns and a new type of mortality amongst females, perinatal mortality, dying just before, during or after giving birth. Why the increase in mortality amongst newborns and why this new type of mortality amongst females? At the University of Montreal, the veterinary medicine facility analyzes the corpse of an adult female. The pathologist has noted a lowering in the average age of the dead females and that many deaths were caused by complications during labor. So the big question we must ask ourselves is whether that birth was linked to her death. And I think the answer is yes. Birthing complications in wild animals are extremely rare. 
And with belugas, especially since the end of the 2000s, if you have young females dying, if you have calves that are dying, that's the recruitment potential for the future population. So it's a real problem. Researchers don't know why so many females and calves are dying, but they suspect there are several factors behind the grim numbers. They have concerns about the quality of the water in the St. Lawrence. The St. Lawrence is the main maritime channel in North America, linking the Great Lakes to the Atlantic Ocean and connecting the industrial cities of Chicago, Detroit, Toronto, and Montreal to the rest of the planet. Urbanization, industrialization, and agriculture put constant pressure on the river. The belugas of St. Lawrence are at the top of the food pyramid and are badly affected. The main contamination problem for belugas is in terms of fat-soluble organic compounds that accumulate in their body fat. Because belugas build up a lot of fat, they build up a lot of contaminants throughout their lives, starting with their development in their mother's womb and also via maternal transfer through the milk, which amplifies the contamination amongst very young belugas who start their lives with a fairly complex cocktail of contaminants, which is added to throughout their lives. Scientists have determined that the belugas of St. Lawrence are 10 times more contaminated by PPDEs, chemicals used as flame retardants. Despite the fact they were banned in the mid-2000s, the poisons remain in the water and continue to accumulate in the animals' bodies. High levels of toxins impair the reproductive capability of the females and might explain premature deaths. But scientists believe there's a third significant problem for the St. Lawrence's beluga population. Robert Michaud has been studying the beluga's surprising loyalty to certain parts of the river. These whales, unlike other beluga populations around the world, are exposed to significant amounts of maritime traffic. Could it be that we're too noisy and that noise interferes with communication between the mothers and their young? Is it that the mothers spend more time looking for their calves and the calves spend more time looking for their mothers, which could lead to them expending additional energy? And in the current context, perhaps that's unsustainable. Beluga whales rely on sounds to stay in touch with each other and to find food. They likely evolve this necessary skill because some populations spend half of the year in total darkness within the Arctic Circle. A calf that becomes separated from its mother won't survive. To discover the key function of one of the calls, and not only the function, but a function that is essential to their survival, which is that of establishing contact between mothers and calves. So to be able to associate with certainty a sound to that function was, was really key in our understanding of the communication system of, of these species. Valeria has identified a unique sound called the contact call that connects a mother to her calf. That's a contact call. That's a contact call, a reply. In the case of the contact call, we now suspect that mother-calf contact or acoustic contact might be getting compromised by um, vessel noise and that in some circumstances this might make a reunion by mothers and calves that have become separated a lot more difficult and this can be dire for little calves. The flow of tourists, and especially the disturbance caused by the boats, is so great that they are disturbing the behavior of the whales to a significant extent. It could even result in a complete absence here. In the St. Lawrence River, big ships emit up to 180 decibels. In 2010 and 2012, the two years where the most newborn deaths were recorded were the years when there were the highest numbers of pleasure craft and belugas at the same time. They were years when it was warm, very little wind and lots of sunshine, so lots of river tourism. We're a kilometre above the ferry line and we can hear it very clearly. The noise of the passing ships has an impact on their behaviour. 
The calls of the young belugas are a similar frequency to those of the ferry, compromising communication between mother and calf. And all of the belugas in the St. Lawrence River are struggling to find food. Belugas eat all kinds of things, but they depend a great deal on deep water fish. We know that deep water fish stocks underwent a massive decline during the 1990s, and that quantity of food was never replaced by anything else. Increased fishing pressure, combined with climate change, are impacting the entire population, not just females and calves. The animals seem to be going further than I'd thought along the estuary. Changes observed in the river, mainly the shrinking ice, suggest that the effects of the warming winters on the belugas are real. We're heading for another winter without ice, another exceptional winter. This summer, the temperature of the water in the estuary was higher than we've ever seen before, more than 8 degrees centigrade. No ice on the riverbank. We haven't had an ice dune for a decade now. These changes are truly phenomenal. Researchers are compiling their data on birth problems, toxins in the water, noise pollution, and climate change. These recent studies by Canadian, European, and American scientists have defined a plan to save the belugas of the St. Lawrence River. The model shows that despite the significant effects of climate change and the melting ice on the whale population, by working to reduce contamination and noise and to increase sources of food, we can reverse the trend and help them re-establish themselves. If we work on just one of these stress factors, we won't succeed. But it is becoming clear that if we work on all three at the same time, we may be successful. Just like canaries can warn coal miners of danger, the canary of the seas is warning us. <laughs>